Hey everybody, welcome back to the CNSL Season 7. Today we're going to be going through the Route of 32's Group B. A very good, very interesting group here today. We have Art User, uh, a very strong ex-Samsung uh, Khan Pro Gamer Zerg. He hasn't really been able to get into ASL yet, but very, very high level. I uh, get to see him play all the time. He's been very active for the last many years. We have Xiao uh, Guge who is one of the top Chinese Protoss players. I do think he's the big underdog of this group, a very strong player, but, uh, you know, I would say like a little bit weaker than Zhan Hun, who we saw in uh, Group A. So I'm not holding out a ton of hope for him getting through, but I, I hope to be surprised by it. Then we have MC. Well, here he's going by Y-Man, uh, but this is the StarCraft II champion, formerly known in Brood War as Iron Cal. Uh, this is one of the most talented RTS players ever, like, in the whole world. He was just about to start making OSL and MSL when StarCraft II came out, so he went to StarCraft II and became one of the best Protosses of all time. In fact, only, like, maybe three Protosses have as many accomplishments as he got in those first few years of StarCraft II. And then we have Bishop. Bishop is probably one of the most popular uh, players on this particular channel artosis cast people love bishop's game uh games he has so many different awesome styles that he ends up using and in my opinion probably the favorite of this group uh i really love bishop's play so like my prediction i feel like bishop and art user probably are a little bit favored but you know it's best of one format anything can happen so let's go ahead and get into this we're going to be going through the entire group today all five games so make sure that you don't go anywhere all right here we go game number one we have up here or down here rather in the bottom left of radion this is xiao Guga. and up here in the top left we have art user we're on radion a four-player map uh, Radeon has been pretty good so far, I think. I, a lot of Terran players have been complaining that it's really, really hard for Terran. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it ends up going. Obviously, this is a Zerg versus Protoss, so no big issue there. And it, I guess what I'm really excited about here is seeing Shao Gaga's, uh PVZ and just seeing what type of level that is. Now, just to mention, within the Chinese scene, there's a lot of very, very good... Uh, Zerg players like Xiao Gu, uh, you know, with Kid, um, you know, it, there's there's a lot of them. Uh, I don't know why my my brain is kind of farting on the the legendary Zerg that like always is doing well in tournaments. He happens not to be playing in this one. I think that's why. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, he has a lot of great Zergs to practice against, and of course, these guys do play the Koreans all the time as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he's able to perform here. Art user is just really solid. I don't feel like Art User has, like, a particular style. Uh, Art User is someone that, like, I've actually played, like, probably 30 times. And it seems like he has just a good range, you know? He's, he's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to put it. It's like nothing stands out as like, oh, he's super aggressive or, oh, he always goes macro. You know, I think we could see anything out of him here. So it is an overpool coming out of Art User, and it looks like a Forge expansion here with two Probe Scouts. So, you know, this is the type of situation where he could Cannon Rush if he sees a Hatchery first. Of course, it's not Hatchery first, so we won't see anything like that. This drone coming out. Uh, I do wonder, is he going like here for an expansion? Is he just going to Scout? Not entirely sure about that. Another drone comes down to take that natural expand, and as he takes it, uh, Shao Guga is going to figure out, okay, this is a pool first build, and he does have to be a little bit careful about that. Probably will throw down a cannon pretty quickly here, uh, but definitely wants that Nexus ASAP. I don't think we'll see another probe till the cannon gets started. But yeah, uh, pretty standard opener, really. Nothing, nothing too crazy here from either side. Uh, so I want to take this moment and like, really thank you guys for checking out Artosis Cast. I hope you're enjoying the CNSL. I know this is only the second group. But this is probably, the, I, I think actually I started this channel to coincide with a CNSL, like four, season four or season five or something. Uh, you know, it's just, this is a tournament that's near and dear to my heart. I love the, the feel of it, how it's kind of like, if you guys remember Code A and Code S from StarCraft II, this is kind of feels like a Code A where it's like, okay, 
there's a lot of good pros and it doesn't seem right that we only focus on asl the top you know 28 pros i love having like two tournaments going on uh in this particular case at the same time you know and you kind of get to see like 60 of the world's best players instead of 28 so really really fantastic hope you guys are enjoying please do make sure that you uh leave a comment and like the video and of course if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that uh big thanks to everyone uh, it's fantastic and i mentioned this uh you know in group a as well but artosis cast is a partial sponsor uh for that prize money in in uh this cnsl tournament so that's a big thanks to everyone who has supported on the patreon that's patreon.com forward slash artosis big thanks to you guys hope that you're enjoying the tournament all right time to discuss what we have going on here our user looks to be going for three hatch hydra right he took his third hatch here as i was talking uh pretty standard stuff we have the hydralis den on the way he's really working hard to deny this probe from getting additional scouting let's take a look at shaukaga he is making uh, a zealot here cyber next core on the way i imagine that he'll go directly uh into a stargate and he should be able to get a scout on the hydra rush before it hits a Zod's coming out so this actually this guy could be a hero we'll see if he can sneak up and figure out what's going on before the corsair does that gives you plenty of time to figure out uh how many cannons you need and everything right or at least begin to figure it out you never know exactly how many hydras they make will it be a full all-in will it be a transition uh it can be hard to say and in fact art user might not know <laughs> either yet right uh maybe he'll just make nothing but hydras and win or lose the game but a lot of times you'll see a zerg pull out of it if it starts to not work or sometimes already have the plan to pull out before they start now the Zot is going to get up and go to the main this is fantastically done by shaukaga this is really really good you can see where the overlord sits if you sneak something up the side uh it doesn't have full vision that and now he gets in the base and he sees the hydra's dead he's gonna harass drones oh my god he almost got that drone not quite not quite Good micro on both sides pulls between this pool to uh, lessen the surface area of the Zerglings. And doing a pretty good job. Going to try to hunt a drone again. Doesn't quite get it, but some lost mining time. Most importantly, he sees... Oh, my God. Uh, there was a Senga Zealot up there that got a drone, so that's pretty big. He sees that there's Hydras. He sees that this is a Hydra bust that's coming. So he starts two cannons immediately. Okay, he has the Corsair, or uh, the Stargate, but hasn't started the Corsair. He has another Zealot hidden to the side. This is fantastic. He'll probably counterattack the third base during this. And as you get up here and see these cannons, there's a decent chance you just stop this rush. Yep, that's what's happening. Okay, he just added another hatchery. So that's, this is our user pulling out of this build. And in fact, as more cannons get started here, the Corsair gets started as well. He already has a secondary forge in the main base because he knows he's going to lose the forge. This is very well played by both sides. I just really have to point that out. Like, there is some good back and forth. And look at the Zealot counterattack during this. Like, Shaoguga has complete control of this area. He's not worried. He sends the Zealot up. Doesn't get a drone here, but that is a lot of lost mining time. Like, seriously, that's a lot of minerals you're going to be missing out on. So this one counterattacking Zealot plus the zealot that snuck up into the main base uh, of art user you put those two together and i'm gonna go ahead and say i think shaugaga is, is ahead here for sure for sure it looks fantastic for him now his corsair is up here harassing we have the drones are still under attack in fact oh he gets one very nice uh takes a lot of damage on the corsair does get one overlord not gigantic uh and he took a lot of damage there so We'll see. I don't think he's going to make any more Corsairs, and I don't think we're going to see plus one either. Uh, but those that the combination of those two things with the layer on the way right now, there's the possibility that Art User just grabs a Spire really quickly, especially if he kills the Corsair. But you know in this type of situation, it's not too likely. There are some players that might still make Corsairs here, you know, as they scout up and see that this is uh, going into a layer. But I think that this is actually very good for Shaoguga. He's going to be able to put on Zealot pressure very heavily. It's going to be hard to squeeze out Mutalisks because of that. And we'll see, like, if he wants to go and arrange goons quickly. He has the Temporal Archives on the way. So obviously going to want to get that Psy Storm very fast. Another hatchery coming up. So already six hatches here for our user. Really getting into the flow of his macro. 35 drones. Really fantastic saturation up here. Pretty good saturation here as well, yeah? 
dude, he's already really well saturated for Zerg. Like, really, it looks very, very good. Great Sim City here as well. Look at how hard this is to attack with the Sunken going up here. Really, really nice. Small group of Hydras here. He does have range and speed. So these are pretty microable. Even if speed zolots come out, you're going to mostly get away from that. And this is going to give you a reasonable scout as well. More gates coming up. Dude, already getting into seven gates. Love to see it. Really good building placement as well. Very easy to macro this. I think we might even see one more gate go down. Uh, you know, eight gate is super, super common. And there it is. So eighth gate down. We have plus one. We have zealot legs. And that means it's time to harass for Shaokuga. He has played an excellent game thus far, but let's see if he can keep that up against our user who definitely knows how to play this kind of extension of a three hatch Hydra. So here go the Zealots up towards 12 o'clock. Gonna get on top of these melee. Oh, a nice little hole there. Uh, it surrounds the Hydras immediately. So kills three in the blink of an eye. Trying to get up there as well. And he actually turns around. That's a good turnaround. You know, the Sunken was dealing tons of damage. He wasn't likely to get through. And I think he knew the travel time of where the Hydras were to when they would probably get up to flank. And if those Hydras had gotten here, he loses every Zealot. He came down and they were here. So his timing between here and here, really, really excellent. I really want to point this out, right? Because I think right now the Chinese uh, pros don't get covered too much for the English speaking audience, right? They, they aren't in like ASL or anything. They've started to enter into ACS quite a bit. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's like this group of players that's very strong that we just don't have a lot of info on, a lot of casts on. So I do want to point that out. That was like very sharp, very nicely done. Looking back at Shao Guga's home, uh, he has a dark Archon. You have to hide this. You have to, tr like, they don't know if they go Meteorless if you have a dark Archon. It's becoming so regular, though, I think they're going to start uh, assuming it. Like, if you don't have Corsairs, you just get a Dark Archon. Most most Protoss players are doing that now. Now, the Zealots running up here, they were checking for a fourth. But yeah, this has to stay hidden. I don't believe Art User knows. There is a Spire, and in fact, eight Mutas on the way. Maelstrom is almost done. You can see in that production tab, we have the plus one armor. Uh, and we also have Dragoon Range on the way. So with eight gates... Or actually, this is nine gates, isn't it? Oh my gosh, going up to nine gates. I actually really like that. We've seen some people diving into even more gateways now to really make a huge army uh, if they're not able to get the, the third base up super fast. Now here come those mutas. If he catches these with a big maelstrom and is able to storm them into oblivion, he is going to be super, super far ahead. Now, if he doesn't catch him, well, I mean, the Mutas can do some damage. There's only a couple cannons here. W one Corsair. I guess he lost maybe the other one. I think he did. One one cannon here. It's not great Mutalist defense that we have right now. So we'll see if he is able to catch these. Now, the Mutas flying around. They find the probe wanting to make a third base. It looks like they're going to check the other location here as well. Go after that Zealot while they're at it. And Shaoguga is looking to catch these. Oh, my God. He gets them. Oh, my God. Huge, huge catch. Gets that Psy Storm off. Fantastically, fantastically done. Absolutely love to see it. That was awesome. Uh, so he's now killed eight Mutas. What did the Mutas kill even? Like a Zealot in a probe? Now Shaoguga is going to uh, get out onto the map. We have Lurkers out, so that's really good. I don't think... Do we have an Observer in this army? I don't believe we do. Yeah, look into the... Oh, no, sorry. He does have one. Looks like he has one Observer so far, so that's pretty good. Bring that Observer up. Looks like he wants to hit this fourth base, and in fact, he's going to get on top of this. This is gone. Dude, these Lurkers don't stand a chance. Gets those Dragoons up in a beautiful straight line there. The Zot's surrounding the Lurkers so they aren't all taking the splash the entire time. Zerglings coming up would be nice. Yeah, get those Zalts in front to tank that. Some storms going down. Even the Corsair adding in some damage. Dude, Shaogaga is crushing face right now. Doing so fantastically. He's up 50, ar 50 supply right now. In fact, 50 army supply. Continues to push forward here with his 1-1 one, one upgrades. We do have plus one ranged attack at the moment for uh, Art User. But he has been pushed back dramatically he's lost a lot of his units a lot of his lurkers he lost his fourth base third base on the way almost done in fact for shaoguga he needs to make sure that he not only secures that base uh but 
keeps it. And it, you know what? It's pocketed in such a way, if we like zoom out a little bit to show the layout of Radeon, right? This whole left side, Shaokuga is kind of controlling it. He attacked here and expanded here. So as long as he zones his army in this general area, it pretty much keeps all of his bases alive unless something crazy like drops comes in, right? Whereas this base where he had originally sent the probe, this is a little bit further out there, a little bit harder, I think, to defend in some ways, but it does have that ramp. So any ramped expansion cannons can really help on. Now, some Ling's going for a little counterattack at this third. Chugaga coming down with his Zealots. The cannons going to be canceled out. So, like, at least that's a good move. The, Ze the Zergling's definitely worth it, right? Throwing away a, a little group of Zerglings to cancel out three cannons. I like it. It's good. It does force him back into this position as well. Looking back up at our user. Okay, we have three hatch. Yeah, so it's still six hatch. Uh, getting melee, getting ranged attack getting overlord speed really important to get overlord speed we're actually maybe a little bit late into that but look at his composition okay it's mostly ling lurker and that's scary for protoss uh just so you know guys like it basically the plus one zealot rushes the reason that exists is to prevent people from going directly ling lurker uh, i'll talk more about that after though because he is attacking into this third base location so much action going on we have the zealots up to, at the top here doing a fantastic job killing a lot of drones, storming out some of these lurkers, a just awesome amount of uh, Dragoons here doing a very good job, but the rest of the army is coming out now. He does have a Maelstrom, almost two. He does have multiple Psystorms left, throwing a Psystorm down here. Let's see what he's able to catch. Oh my God, insanely, insanely good Maelstrom there. Throws a Storm down as well. Oh my God, his army control is very, very good. His timings are very, very good. Another Maelstrom is actually ready. Throws it down, catches three Hydras. Not as good as before, but still pretty strong. A nice snipe there on the Observer. There is one Observer remaining though, so he should be able to clean these Lurkers. Now I want to see Shaogaga run. Uh, you know, like he took that fight so well. He's still up a good 30 supply here. But if he loses this group, he might actually fall behind. He needs to make sure he keeps this alive, reinforces with Zealots and High Templars and then he can start really roaming and attacking again you have to be careful not to lose your dragoon stack really in any matchup very very important stuff for protoss now you can see some additional cannons being thrown up wants to make sure he doesn't lose this taking his fourth base in beautiful time here look at this we're gonna have this fourth base done around 16 minutes which is really nice link counter attack art user right into that very very quickly sends those lings up cancels out the cannons again so he's done a good job with that Ooh! going after the dark archon i think that was a great pickup there's no reason to leave your opponent with a dark archon especially considering we have a hive uh one thing to mention because i think we don't see dark archons enough they do have feedback for just 50 energy so they're an extremely good counter to defilers in fact maybe the best counter that there is against the actual defiler unit for protoss uh so love to see that snipe and i would like to see as well uh, you know, art user get into those defilers. I think it's really important. Now, Shaogaga is going to have a fourth base up in mining before art user does. This is a problem. This is a problem. But the composition is actually very, very good, right? He's going for plus two melee, plus two carapace, and adrenal glands. He already has plus two attack. So the upgrades are very good over here for art user. And again, I was mentioning this before, but we started the attack. Zergling Lurker kind of counters everything okay it's a really 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 good composition and it is because of very fast plus one attack on zealots with their legs that you kind of have to go hydras you can't just go lings and counter that because they get too cost inefficient because if you could you'd have tons of gas left be able to get lurkers the lurkers start to counter the zealots the lings counter everything once they have adrenal upgrades uh it's it's kind of crazy see they actually run in there with their adrenal kill two high templars immediately so it is a very scary composition definitely right now shaogaga is winning but i feel like there's still a lot of play here just based off of what i see this is excellent turtling excellent turtling he needs the fourth and he is trying to get it he has yeah excellent turtling look at this two two lurkers two two lings uh, with adrenal upgrades well just about two two and he's making that hatch like might be time to start going speed shuttles here by the way uh we do have plasma shield upgrades here for shaogaga i do love to see that as well he's already got two two himself 
but adding in those uh, plasma shields, definitely a good upgrade, but they are very expensive. That's why you don't see them too often. Some zealots trying to hit top right. Those are going to be cleaned in a matter of seconds. Pokes in here. Okay, no hatchery. I don't think there's any reason to try to attack. I think, like, the way that Xiaogaga loses this game is attacking this. That is my opinion. I think if you just continually roam back and forth and you start going shuttles, it should... I think Xiaogaga wins, honestly. Look at it, right? This base is going to be hard to defend against shuttles. Maybe he can get a nice up. Maybe he can get maybe some Scourge over here or something to try to catch those shuttles. But just this roam makes it so that you can't really reinforce this area without something like Anitis. Uh, he is making some shuttles now, I believe. I think we have a shuttle out right now. Not sure where it is, but I did see it on the production tab before. He is getting shuttle speed, Kadarin amulet. I love these upgrades that we're seeing. There are the first defilers. Goes ahead, throws down a Dark Swarm. Of course, the Dark Swarms here are going to make the Dragoons pretty useless. And uh, the Archons, actually, th that's a ranged attack, but it has Splash. So the Dark Swarm actually does a lot against Archons as well. Their, their base attack doesn't do anything. Only the Splash does anything. So just want to throw that out there. Dark Swarm, very good against Protoss. Not as good as against Terran, but very good. Some Zealots being surrounded here. And you can see the strength of these Zerglings. My God, they just crush everything with those upgrades. And they're so, so cheap. A couple Hydras randomly in there. He's just going to pull back. Killed a group of Zealots, runs away. Okay, good stuff. Lots of Archons being added in. Love to see this. Plague coming up for our use. One of the most important upgrades you can get in that late game. Plague is going to be uh, very, very strong. You know, obviously, it doesn't do anything to the shields, but the shields take full damage from everything. Generally, they have less armor upgrades. Generally, you have less shields than health, right? All these things, you put it together, and it's like, okay, Plague... Protoss units don't heal their actual health like Terran units do, right? So there's not a lot of counterplay to it. It's very, very good. Now, here is the shuttle, okay? He's got three Eye Templars and a Zealot. Scourge, you can see he has fielded some Scourge. He is looking to block this because our user knows right now that that's what he's kind of weak to. Shuttle play up here could be really hard to stop. Maybe, I'm wondering if he can maybe use a couple shuttles to like drop Zealots off here in this general area, then attack up the ramp, right? Pull lurker spines in that direction and get up there and just crush it with your whole army. Because if he kills this base, the game's over. This base is 100% mandatory for our user to have a chance in this game. He must keep that base. He is taking another base here. Looks like we have a nice group of the, those lings that ran away are actually over in this area. So he's looking to maybe cancel a base later on and Shaogaga is getting ready to take that. So really nice play. Just kind of jumping around, seeing the little group, see what's where. Uh, I like this move, by the way, that we're seeing. He's just poking out and, like, throwing storms down. He's saying, okay, well, you have all these burrowed lurkers and, and everything. We'll just, we'll storm them slowly over time. And look, he's got this little forward group of units to snipe. Notice how he had some forward units guarding the High Templars and then the rest of them back. So when the plague comes out, the plague is only at, like, it only hits 30% of the army instead of 100% or 90% of the army, whatever. Uh, so just want to throw that out there. Very nice, again, army control here from Shaogaga. Some Zealots coming up. Okay, here comes that shuttle. There's only one Scourge. Oh, man! Six Storm Drops coming out right now. Absolutely six Storm Drops. Kills every drone here except for one. Absurdly good. Absurdly good. Cancels out this base. Dude, he's in complete control. He, I, I am getting some chills right now. A couple things I do want to point out. It's only 48 probes, but it's 24 drones, so it doesn't matter in this case. But that's kind of a surprisingly low count. Maybe I... I, I feel like maybe I miss, like, something, but I don't think so. Like, I've been looking at the minimap a lot here. Uh, but yeah, that's it just seems, like, slightly low on those drones. But he's he's playing the game so, like, not perfectly, but it feels that way in a lot of ways. The way that he's roaming, the harassment he's done... The timings to kill these bases, just extremely satisfying PVZ here from Shaogaga. Now, you can see how badly, like I said, you miss your main attack and it's just splash. And the thing is, Dark Swarm offsets the attack. So, like, if you have a unit with splash damage attacking one lurker under Dark Swarm, it doesn't hit. Uh, if there's multiples, sometimes the splash gets offset onto other ones. 
But yeah, that's what you just saw there. So a lot of people think Archons are a good counter against Darkstorm. They're really, they're, they're, they do okay, but they're not that good. Okay, now a lot of Lurker Hydra coming down. He's still dealing damage up here in the top right. Art user is in trouble. Uh, this game might end soon here. Like, we'll see though. This is this is a pretty scary attack. He's got fantastic, fantastic upgrades. Almost 333 on his Zerg units. Does have the plus three carapace. And he's actually picking off a lot of high quality units right now. You remember I said before this Dragoon count, you're not supposed to lose it. Like you need to keep that alive. You need to continue to roam. And he has lost a lot. But if you look at the overall supplies here, right? Only 26 drones. That's like, dude, that is barely after a three hatch Hydra, right? Like 26 is super, super low. Okay. Like for Protoss and Terran, uh, you want like 20 probes on a base. So it, it's just, it's very, very bad economy here uh, for our Zerg player. Looking at this, okay, like not a ton of probes, good saturation. He has mineral patches there. Probably should send some of these probes somewhere else to get a little bit more. But yeah, their economies are not fantastic. Some more damage being dealt up here. Oh my God, he got another drop off there. Look at that 19 drones. He is droning up now, trying to get something done there. Luckily, there is an Overlord here to clear that DT. Gonna kill off this cannon, so this base gonna be really, really hard to take. I wonder if he keeps these here. His supply is solo, 53 to 123, man. That's no good. That's, that's rough. Like, he needs this army up here. I don't know. This looks, this looks pretty darn bad for our user right now. I, yeah, I... I think basically uh, it's it's like I said before, okay? The roaming is really good here. You actually need to think about an additional base for Shaoguga or you need to kill this top right. Again, if you kill the top right, the game ends. Uh, otherwise, you do need another base because of... Well, I, this is still really healthy. This is not. But yeah, you, need, you do need another base. <laughs> Uh, it's either kill that base or get another base. Probably the best uh, the best uh, idea here for Shaogago would be to take another base and continue to try to harass up here. Because this economy, there's like, look, there, okay, there's two Scourge that and one Zergling. That's the defense of this base right now. Now, obviously, he's making more units. He has the Nidus. He's really looking to defend this base. This has really become the focal point of everything at this point. Ooh, Snipes the Observer, nice. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of the thing that you need to see worked on here. Now, here comes a speed shuttle. This is really important. If this gets caught by Scourge, big, big victory there for our user. Maybe he can continue to climb back. If it gets in there and storms the drones again, we might actually just see our user GG. All right, nice plague going down. Gets all those uh, zealots very badly injured. And here we go. Oh my god, perfect, perfect catch there by Art User. That's painful, right? So that was 700 minerals, minerals, 300 gas, gone for 25 minerals, 75 gas. That's the type of trade you need if you want to come back and win this game. I love this, by the way. He lost this a couple times. There's been units hiding up here. There's been units counterattacking here. You can take this base. It's not a problem. It's not like we've seen drops flying around or something. There's no mutas on the map. I think it's going to be completely safe. Couple of defilers coming down looking for plagues. Uh, now, plague is one of the best things for coming back for Zerg. It's like super, super cost efficient. And look, lures some uh, Zerglings in as well. The thing is, it only makes Archons look cool. Oh my God, another shuttle came up. Some more storms back down to 24 drones. He is going to clear this ground defense very easily, but still a lot of lurkers up here. I can't believe this game is still going on. Look at this. Mind out, mind out, mind out. This is it, man. He needs to get his drones over here. Most of them seem to be in this area. Uh, does get rid of that shuttle now. Going to start mining once again. Look at this. No income at the moment. That additional fifth base coming up. All the probes going to need to be transferred from this base over to there. This could honestly use an, another eight, nine, ten probes. Like you could transfer a big group. Uh, could could just put a couple probes here just to clean that up as well. Definitely a time to take a close look at your economy and decide what you need to do to make it healthy to end up finishing this game. <clears throat> and I got to say, like, it, it's a game that feels like it could end very quickly. Like, basically, it, 
if any more damage happens up here, how do you how do you come back? But Art user is fighting really well. Okay, so what you do is you take 20 supply here because it's 20 more probes. Those don't help you in a fight. So it's like 145.92. That's like just borderline on defense there for Zerg. He is going to be able to hold on. And again, the unit comp is very good. It's like Defiler, Lurker, Ling. So that's like a very good set of units. But, oh, this could be dangerous, man. Oh, yes. This is this is a mistake. The size Storms here are going to absolutely ravage. He does have a couple observers. Oh, man. I feel like this is a huge missed opportunity. A huge missed opportunity. These were already very damaged from Storm. He has more Storms. He has Zealots. I feel like he can just run in here and kill everything. Maybe afraid of that Defiler, afraid of the plagues that could come out. Great Storm to kill that off, though. Trading Storms for units right now is fantastic. Trying to get through the Scourge... Uh... <laughs> what is this? The Scourge Embargo line or something? Like, he's... No, that's not quite right. Uh, but yeah, he's he's trying to get in there and get some more storm harassment done. Can't quite do it. A lot of Archons, man. Mass, mass Archons here. Gonna move forward with those. Okay, gets past those Scourge, but Hydras are awaiting. Oh man, another one goes down. Can our user win this game? I find myself wondering. Like, he is being super, super efficient. The Dark Swarms, like I, I showed you before, right? The Archons don't do that well against them. Makes all the Archons look cool. Just for the record, uh, Plague to Archons does, like, seven damage. No, I guess it actually does nine most of the time. No, I guess it does seven, sorry. Yeah, so it does damage in groups of three and it doesn't it doesn't kill you right so it just brings archons all down to three health so yeah it is seven damage uh <clears throat> so not super useful against archons i don't really care about it okay mass archon he has some storms definitely needs to keep on utilizing those storms i feel like what he was doing before over here should be utilized here where he was standing there with his army like, just stand there with Mass Archon, a few Zealots, and bring your High Templars up. And just walk up one High Templar time. Storm. 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 Right? Just grind, grind, grind. And once you hit, like, the, the critical low mass of Lurkers, you can probably attack in at that point. If he could get into Reaver, Reaver would crush this. Like, with the amount that's left, it would be amazing. Now, I don't know that I like this... He'll be able to clear it. These hatches aren't being used that much. Like, I wonder if he would trade. Because there's plenty of hatches everywhere and there's a Nidus. So he doesn't actually need these. He hasn't been producing out of them. And he's not gaining much gas there at all. It's it's depleted, so he's only getting two gas per trip. So you're not even really counting that gas very much. Uh, but, like, losing one Archon or whatever to clear that. I wonder, I wonder if that's a trade Art user would happily do. It sounds crazy, but really... Okay, the Defiler's coming down, looking for some plagues, it looks like. Archon's coming forward. Well, that might have been a mistake. <laughs> Is he going to lure him back? Oh, God. All right, loses one. Does throw that down. Okay, the Archons are going to massacre these Hydras, at least, right? Great Storm goes down. And with the Zalot's help, he does clear everything. Attacking up. Ooh, killing the Nidus is actually pretty big stops all these units that are being made from being reinforced to the other side and of course the units over here can no longer reinforce over to here so he's gonna have to actually walk his army over unless he wants to lose all of his tech so the archons doing a great job starting to cut through here i think it might be time to think about taking another base like just move a chunk of your army down here and take this archons moving up into that main base all right what is the plan here like, maybe we just see a Dark Storm. If he Dark Storms here, this base dies. You're going to have to bring all of your reinforcements over. Maybe you can save it, but, uh, you know, one Dark Storm and the cannons don't do anything. So that is a good play. Oh, don't lead with the Defiler. <laughs> all right, so right now, a little bit of a base trade. Getting on top of these this base, losing his main. Did he throw down the Extra Tech Defiler Mound? Uh, Hydralist Den, Spawning Pool. Okay, got what he needs. Killing this base off now. Dude, pretty wild game we have here. Still, maxed out Shao Gaga should be able to win. 
What an impressive game from our Chinese Protoss player. Let's see. You know, he's going to bring his army. He's maxed, so there's no reason not to attack at this point, really. And with Psy Storms against Ling Lurker, there's not that many Lurkers. He's going to pull a lot of Lings. The Lings are going to get massacred by the amount of Archons and Zealots in here. The Lings come up to fight. They're kind of uh, here to tank as well for those Lurkers, but those are going to get picked off. Continues to push forward. And I think that's it, guys. I think we're finally at the end. There's just nothing left here for our user anymore. He has this group, but it's not even coming back. I think he's coming to terms with the fact that our Chinese Protoss is going to the winner match. Absolute craziness. A great, great game here from Xiao Gaga. Uh, scouts everything amazingly well. Great timing attacks. Great, great feel for what was going on throughout the game. Really, really enjoyed this one and learning more about Xiao Gaga's play style. Uh, fantastically done. And that means Art User is going to go to the loser match. Uh, and of course, Shao Gaga going to wait for the winner there of MC and Bishop, which we will be casting next. GG. So here we go into match number two. We have here in the top right of Radeon, Bishop. You guys know him. You love him. He has a great style. I haven't seen his Terran versus Protoss that much recently. Uh, been definitely seeing more of his Terran versus Zerg, which is quite dynamic. But we'll see what he's able to do here against a StarCraft II legend. It is MC. Of course, MC, guys, uh, you know, if you look at lots of the top guys in StarCraft II, uh, they were becoming top guys in StarCraft One right before StarCraft II came out. Rain, Sulky, Innovation, Mini, MC, right? These are these are all players that were really breaking into the top of StarCraft 1 Pro Gaming. StarCraft 2 came out. They went to StarCraft 2. They became killers, right? MC, one of the best ever. He's very, very good. Uh, practices a lot right now. And, like, I have faith in the guy. Like, I've known him for a very long time. We've seen, uh, you know, his, his play, his championship level play in StarCraft 2 all the time and i think he can absolutely you know get that that skill back in starcraft one he's already started to he's very good and i hope he has a good solid game here against bishop because bishop i think is like uh he's right on the right on the line of getting into like the asl consistently right like he's in there sometimes but not all the time so i think people like bishop uh, you know, scan, you know, there's, there's a few of these guys like, so, so, uh, the, these, these types of players are like ample, right? Uh, very, very close to like just being regulars and yeah, Bishop might even be chief amongst those, right? Like he is, he is playing really fantastically lately. Uh, and he has been around for a long time. It's crazy how long it takes to be a steady Starcraft one pro. It's just, the game is, it, there is no other esport that it takes this long to be a pro in. there It does not exist. It literally takes like 10 years to become a, a real pro in StarCraft 1. Like a lot of these guys that have been playing for so long, it's like they're still, I still call them up and coming, but it's like, yeah, I know this guy's, you know, I don't know exactly when Bishop started playing, but it was probably like, it's probably been 15 years. <laughs> I kid you not, but he's still up and coming and we still are like looking towards him uh, to become like a, a regular of the, the big leagues. Anyways, enough chat about that. Uh, looking at these builds, it looks really normal. Really normal stuff. We'll see if he goes for the range upgrade or if he's just going to go Nexus. Over on Bishop's side. Yeah, nothing, nothing in particular, you know. Nice fast factory, making a few Marines. He is doing the end scout here which is generally what you want to do with a factory expansion. You don't have to, but it's it's helpful if they go Nexus first. It can allow you to bust it. Uh, getting that third Marine. I imagine he's just going to go uh, Vulture Command Center. That's really kind of the, the norm right now. Now, the SCV comes up. He actually turns it around rather than scoots by the Dragoon. He could have scooted by, but he sees that Dragoon. Now, what I want to see is if he makes a bunker right away. Right now, it's very meta for Terrans to make a bunker before the Command Center. But he goes command center and actually brings the Marines way down here. Okay, interesting. Um, it, it can be risky. So here's here's what it is. I, I actually want to discuss this because nothing real is going to happen here. He's going to have a vulture out and then 
MC is going to come up with a Dragoon and Probe because Dragoon Probe beats three Marines, but uh, three Marines Vulture uh, kills Dragoon Probe, right? And he'll make a bunker because he's keeping this Dragoon forward. Uh, but what I wanted to mention is basically right now there's been a slight meta shift uh, in, in Terran versus Protoss. It's a very small one where uh, let's say you're doing the end scout, right? And Bishop scouted bottom right. And then second scout goes up here and runs into a Dragoon. You make the bunker before the command center because a lot of times with this Dragoon, if he had a Zealot, let's say he had a Zealot and his first Zealot came out and was like hiding here, okay? And you go for the command center and you have three Marines coming out to pressure that Goon and the Goon comes in with the Zealot, you will be so far behind, it's actually silly. Whereas if you make the bunker, yeah, your command center is a little bit slower. Your optimizations are a little bit less, but you don't... Like, literally, you'll sometimes die if they hide the Zealot. And he doesn't know if he has the Zealot, right? There's no way to tell because the Dragoon pops at the same time either way. So, yeah, just I just want to throw that out there. That was like a little bit of a risky play. And maybe something that Bishop could pay for later on in this tournament. Not this particular game, but, you know, if I'm doing real research on my opponents as a Protoss player... That would be something I'd look at and say, oh, I should just make the Zealot and hide it. And, you know, maybe maybe he he plays like he did here. Okay, anyways, enough talk of that. Uh, mines are coming out. He has a single tank that pushes these goons back. He's waiting for mines to lay these mines here. It looks like he's going to go for the third. MC with the two gates just producing. He's already up to five Dragoons. So actually playing very, very safe. Uh getting the robo up getting observers so two gate observer into third base reaver is the most common play right now uh for protoss players it's it's super super common it's super strong uh and i think that's what mc will do i've seen him do that uh in his protoss first terran so would not be surprised if Ab as that observer comes out he clears this area and takes his nexus looking over on bishop's side of the map right well first off he is laying the mines around these are kind of scouting mines to see when everything is uh you know, coming out towards him, that type of thing, and gives him a little bit of map control for the time being. He went for the one factory mine expand into the academy or the uh, armory. He's going for the second factory, and he's actually going uh, academy here. Now, if I gotta say, there are some risks being taken by Bishop, which is fine. You can take risks. Uh, but if this had been Quick Reaver, he would be in trouble. Uh, he has some well-placed mines. Like, you know, maybe you just land the Reaver on the mines. Who knows? Uh, but if this had been Quick Reaver, like his first anti-air is going to be coming out now. And Quick Reaver would already be there. Regular time Reaver would be coming out around the time the Goliath is popping out. But one Goliath doesn't stop Reaver, as you guys all well know. So he was really kind of expecting this build, and he's been extremely greedy against it, which is strong. Uh, MC did take this base as anticipated. We're going to keep an eye and see if he goes for that Reaver tech I was talking about or if he wants to go for something else. But yeah, an additional Goliath. So if I look at these openers, it's better for Bishop right now. And again, this has a lot to do with him taking a few risks. Like, it's considered Terran Greed in this matchup to go Academy instead of, uh, instead of eBay. eBay is just safer in a lot of ways. And he will end up getting an eBay here as well. Uh, you do still definitely want that. You might need a couple turrets. It's really safe to just like put a turret down. It, it kind of centralizes your defense. Looking over at MC's base. Oh, oh, I like it kind of. Okay, let's talk about this. So he's added two gates and he's added a citadel. I think he's going to go directly into Arbiter. Uh, now, there is a possibility he goes Gateway Man. That would be crazy. I don't think he's going to go Gateway Man. Uh, so, to rush into Arbiter from this spot, this particular map, uh, that can be good. And also, in the current metagame, this is something I was theorizing lately. Uh, and I just heard a scan go down. Look, we have Templar Archives. We have a Forge. Is he going to throw the Stargate? I think we just heard a scan, so I think we'll th he'll throw that down now. There it is. Okay. Dude, I'm wiggling. I'm wiggling right now. Sorry I'm nerding out so much in this cast, but we're seeing, like, really, really interesting plays from these guys. I actually have chills all over my body. But this is... Okay, so he's Arbiter rushing. Now, why is this good in the current meta? Because Arbiters fell out of meta at the pro level for a really long time. The reason why this is good 
is because Arbiter builds can't attack you till they have Arbiter out, okay? Their earliest timing is when the Arbiter has 100 energy. So what you're supposed to do against Arbiter builds is expand more quickly, less factories. Right now, the meta is like every game go five factory, and that has to do with the strength of Reavers. Everyone goes Reaver right now. So you go five factory, so the Reaver doesn't do anything to you, and then you can either push or you can take an additional base, right? Either one of those is fine. And by the way, this is a great trade from MC. This is fantastic from MC. Pulls back, pulls back. Good pullback. Only loses three goons. I like it a lot. Dealt a lot of damage. Killed a couple uh, Killed a couple of the Goliaths. Okay, sorry. I, I, I'm like tripping over myself here. So it makes sense for the metagame for Protoss to go back into Arbiter play, okay? Because if your opponent is going five factory, five factory timing pushes against this is not good like you'll get over here and it'll look good for a little bit but your opponent has arbiter and they might be going they might be going into uh you know recall they might be going into stasis do you have enough scans right as they as they push forward with uh cloaked units and run zealots to drag your minds and things like that there's all these different questions your third base is going to be much later and especially on a map like this if i zoom out for a moment here on radeon this is a very wide open map. This is why Terrans consider this map very hard. It's really hard to push across. So Arbiter is like the best form of Gateway Man, right? It's basically Gateway Man with some flying cloaky guys. So you get these huge armies in the center and it makes it really hard for Terran to push. So like I said, I think that metagame wise, this is a really good build from MC and I'm really happy to see such a smart, strong Protoss player uh, agreeing with my assessment on that. Uh, so anyways, Bishop is trying to push cross. This push isn't going to work. MC is going to crush this. He can attack right now. Okay. He doesn't attack. He lets everything siege and then attack. So he missed like a much better timing here. He is dropping. He's going to kill a ton of tanks. Uh, he is going to lose a ton of units as well, though. If he had hit before those sieged, he would have killed all of this as well and still had like three more goons. So that was a little missed timing there. He is going to pull back. I think he's still fine. Bishop is rallying his five fact down. Ooh, so a few of these vultures actually getting caught. Look at this. The Zealot's getting on top of some of these siege tanks. He's got to keep these goons in here and active. He's got to put the damage out with them, right? While you're kiting the Zealots, you need the goons to be dealing damage. And they are a little bit. Needs to pull back now. It needs to pull back. Very good pullback right there. The Zealots just sacrificed as they need to be. Keeps six goons alive. Not as many as he wants, but look at his gateway count right now. This is 11 gates plus Arbiter coming out. Now, this Arbiter was a little bit slow. He was slow in the Arbiter Tribunal. So there would normally already be an Arbiter down here helping before there's even a missile turret. But now Bishop will be able to get the missile turret. So Bishop has taken this situation that I'm very convinced this was not good for him, but he has done a pretty good job with it. And some of that is MC's uh, weaknesses, right? He missed that possible attack in the center as his zealots were rallying down. And his Arbiter is slightly late this game based on when he started his Stargate. Okay. The three bases are mining at 53 probes. We have 52 SCVs. Third base is still coming. This is still tricky. Notice how he's like coming in and he's clearing some mines. Here we go. Looks like MC has decided it's time. Trying to drag mines, trying to drag mines. Sick mine drag right there. Trying for another, trying for another. Ooh, reduces the seed chain count down here quite a bit, killing a lot of the vultures as well. Dude, this is not working super well. He might just pull back. I think you can still maybe siege in this area, but it looks like he's going to pull all the way back. MC has broken through, right? And this is exactly what I was saying should happen with a five factory. You might get up here. It might start to look good, but the Arbiter comes out. The cloaked units start running in and the Arbiter player breaks through. So Bishop pulling back, getting into a very defensive formation. Now, Recall is on the way. This Arbiter has over 100 energy. So in about 45 seconds, we can have a Recall. Are you going to have good Recall defense by then, Bishop? I don't think he is. Okay? Science Vessel is on the way. Okay. It's not going to have EMP. EMP hasn't been started, and it takes a long time for it to gain that energy. All right? It starts with 50 energy, so it takes like almost a minute to get an EMP out. And that's after it's done. Uh, you need a lot of turrets. You need spotting to stop the Arbiters. There's a lot of angles you can fly in too, right? But look at this. Dude, Bishop's turret placement and Goliath placement is amazing. Let me, sh let me show you this, right? 
turret 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 this is not like an arbiter can fly over here and recall so he needs more here but look this middle-ish area goliaths this middle-ish area goliaths these are very common paths for recalls these middle-ish areas because it's like okay turrets can't really be built in here so you just kind of fly over he's got additional turrets back there a lot of turrets up the top great moves now mc starting to run in here trying to break through dude he's gonna surround a bunch of these tanks mc is crushing my predictions could not have been worse for this group. Ah! Our Protoss players are absolutely killing it, man. Like, playing beautiful, beautiful games. And he does use the stasis. He hasn't utilized the recall. He had, he, you know, he had the energy for recall, but decided instead to use stasis to shut down these tanks. Definitely the right call. You can't, you can't blame him for that. You shut down these tanks. Look how much damage he's dealing. Bishop is, he's very close to death very close to death and mc is playing this just right as well notice how he's keeping units on these tanks he wants these three tank kills chasing away the scvs killing some of this static defense depots things like that look at this he's gonna kill these tanks yep the tanks all go down more units rallying in fourth nexus is about to finish this is a beautifully played game from mc i think he chose the perfect strategy i think he executed it almost perfectly the only execution error again the arbiters were just slightly slower than they could have been and that one attack that could have happened in the center unreal dude like look at this 141 to 85 bishop's dead he hasn't left the game yet but he's basically a zombie he's been bitten there's no saving him there's no vaccine he's got no units he's on five factory let's look at his upgrades two two the upgrades are fantastic you know obviously two two upgrades are fantastic you can't can't talk shit about that but uh <laughs> everything else is pretty bad for him if mc just continues to macro cleanly he can either do recalls he can do stasis whatever whatever looks good at the moment look at this he's charging through these uh through these mines now just trying to clear some stuff it, it, like just don't waste your dragoons and you're good and look at how every time he loses those front zealots he pulls the dragoons back he's actually doing that better than like a lot of pro protosses a lot of pro protoss is kind of like waste their dragoons this is actually like a trend i've seen as the pros that went to, first off basically everyone who went to starcraft 2 as a korean pro was a starcraft 1 pro just a lower level one that wasn't as famous but as they come back i feel like they've improved their skill their understanding of rts far more than the brood war pros maybe i'll talk about that later but uh comes in for the recall the mp does get off in time that was an excellent save if a recall goes off the game ends right there you're just it's too dirty to clean up like maybe he can clean it up but it's it's bad you lose a lot so arbiter just chilling up here whatever uh mc rotating around the map a little bit looks like it's time to take more nexuses and he's definitely right about that as long as he just continues to macro cleanly look at this he's up 70 supply 70 supply as you max out with protoss terra needs 140 supply in position to stop attacks so we're very close from mc just rolling him over okay couple stasis go or a couple tanks get stasis pushing himself over this tiny bridge but not that many siege tanks to really punish Zell, i mean the vultures are in a nice arc so he's doing a good job with that d matrix on the vulture always like that type of move but that one happened to be low health so uh dies pretty quickly some damage gets through defense matrix just not too much going for the command center i think bishop's gonna gg there's really nothing left really nothing left here <coughs> uh man it's like he has so much to stasis that there's just not like i'm he's he's in the game he's getting through three three you know he did make it up to six factories i tell you i i god i love starcraft truly look at look at how cool this is like i seeing mc right this old starcraft 2 legend return to his original game starcraft 1 make these amazingly good decisions fantastic awareness of keeping his dragoons alive great bus he's trading before we hit like critical masses for bishop bishop has no chance he has no chance here he's so dead another nexus goes down you know he's gotten up to a very healthy siege tank count uh and he has more army supply than you would think because he's only at 36 scvs so like even though it says 97 this should feel more like 120 
But yeah, uh, MC is just kind of waiting because Bishop eventually has to make a move, right? And MC could literally make a Nexus on every spot, every spot in the map. <laughs> he really could. He's actually adding a second Stargate. I think that's just going to be for Arbors as well. He's added in the Psy Storm, of course. This was a fantastically well-played game. I'm, oh man. I just keep getting more and more excited about CNSL. So many good games already. The fact that Xiao Gaga and MC are like way over delivering according to my expectations shows you how important it is that we have a tournament like the CNSL, right? Like that we get to see, okay, how good are these guys right now? How do they look right now? I tell you, maybe we'll see MC in ASL next season. That would be something else, wouldn't it? Comes in for this attack. Good EMP. It's a good placement of units as well. This is like as cost efficient as you're going to get as Bishop. But Storm's coming down. Lots of units. Even if he kills this whole army, you're never getting up to anything that can attack him. Right? In this very entrenched position, okay, you're trading reasonably well. Imagine trying to walk out with that much supply into the center. It will never, ever, ever, ever work. MC getting up here on top of everything. Like, okay, there you go. GG on to the winner's match. So this is the winner's match, and I thought it would be the loser's match. We have in the top left, none other than China's Xiao Guga played an amazing PVZ uh, against Art User, the Korean pro. Uh, definitely deserving to be here, no question. Like, he just, he outplayed him. Yeah, there's no two ways about that. In the bottom right, the legend of StarCraft 2. It's MC. Uh man. I'm just I'm I'm super pumped. Uh, he way outplayed Bishop there. I think he made great metagame calls. Very few mistakes that game. Really high level understanding of what there was to do. I and again, these these the guys who came back from StarCraft 2. Like, I'm talking, for instance, MC, what we just saw there, uh, Sulky, Rain, uh, TY, these guys that were champions in StarCraft II and came back, like, obviously, they are cream of the crop regardless, and they were really rising up in in StarCraft One before they left. But, like, I feel like the StarCraft II, like, having played that for years, it gives you a different perspective on what to do strategically. And it's so interesting to see them bring that back to Brood War and have that in their play, right? I love it. I love it. I feel like it's adding a lot of diversity um, to, to the different strategies, to the different outlooks. And this is the type of thing I want to see. Uh, just makes me very, very happy. Now, looking at this game, this is kind of funny. We're on Citadel, right? So kind of a funny map for PvP. I haven't thought about it on PvP yet. I haven't seen it PvP yet. But MC is cross-scouting. So, dude, is he going to cross scout as well? Is Shao Kuga going to cross scout as well? They're going to cross scout first and find each other first. I can't pretend to know why this is. Oh. Okay, he actually turns around. So what that looks like to me is maybe because he might have seen the angle this was coming and thought, oh, there could be proxies. So maybe that's what Shao Kuga was doing. MC, my guess is he has a different plan if you're cross spawn than if you're close spawn. Uh, that's that seems pretty reasonable, right? Like if you're close spawn, uh, you guys would be very surprised, I think, at how different the travel distance can be. Like the travel distance is significantly further cross spawn and really changes the range of build orders that you can do in there. Well, you can do anything, but the efficiency of them, right? Like there's certain rushes you just never want to do cross spawn because. You know, if every single unit has to walk for, you know, sometimes eight, nine seconds more to get to their base. Well, I mean, that just weakens uh, an early build so much, so much. So anyways, we have range on the way as well as Dragoons. Xiao Gaga did make that first sellout and is going into range with Dragoons afterwards. Of course, as those Dragoons pop out and kill the probes, then we'll see what they really want to do. You do want to hide that. Uh, to a certain degree, what your what your build is going to be. He's going to force him to take that additional hit as he runs that away, and Shaguga actually got away with his probe. So, in many ways, better scouting there by Shaguga. Uh, okay, well, uh, we're going to bring this game to a head pretty quickly. <laughs> Citadel of a dune coming up for MC. He's going for a Dark Templar rush. What do we see here? Second gate? Is he going three gate? 
Is he going three gate? It really looks like it. GG! Okay, so this is the only high ground, okay? This little strip, you can fit two units there. So there's no real high ground. On flat maps uh, for Protoss versus Protoss, it's rock, paper, scissors. And this isn't 100% flat. Just, you know, that, that little bit of high ground might make a difference, but not too much. Uh, so the rock, paper, scissors is uh, three gate Dragoon beats Robo. Robo beats Dark Templar. Dark Templar beats three gate Dragoon. Now the worst of those is Dark Templar versus three gate Dragoon. If you go Observer, the uh, Dark Templar player still has a little bit of play, right? If you go three gate Goon, the Robo player still has a little bit of play. If you go Dark Templar and your opponent has gone three gate Dragoon, there is no detection. And when your DT gets there, they say GG and they leave. Or sometimes they counterattack and frantically try to get a forge up and hope that somehow uh, you're a potato and you can't like easily kill everything they have with a DT and pop one out at home to defend. So yeah, the uh, I imagine that this game is going to end very quickly. Now, one thing to mention, he's only making one Dark Templar. So this seems to be a little bit of a hybrid build. Normally you will see at least two Dark Templars with this, but I think what we're seeing from MC is the DT will lead and then he has his own three gate Trigoon. So the DT deals unbelievable damage output, right? Like, I mean, it's 40 normal damage. It's a huge amount. So if it gets the main base, you're gonna win. And if it helps against the Dragoons, your Dragoons will come out on top. So the DT trying to go across, Shaoguga might've seen that. And yes, he did. He starts a forge. Now he'll he'll start uh, put dragoons on hold position here. He should put them exactly here on hold position. Or oh, is he gonna try to make a wall? Maybe, but it has to it has to be forges. It can't be dragoons. Now he has counterattacked here very hard. Uh, no DT again. This is why you make two DTs because you just you, the DT cleans this up super fast. I don't know, man. This is super like. He has a forge. He's not starting his cannons. He starts one cannon. Holy crap. Can Shaoguga hold this? The DT from MC has not attacked yet. Like, he has it on a right click, and he's just microing really heavily here. Now, his Dragoons win the battle. And he's forcing cannons. And he is killing some units with the DT. Shaoguga is going to live through this. That's kind of crazy. But I think MC will actually still win this just because the Dragoons of Shaoguga had to be sacrificed, right? So I think what happens here is MC just rallies Dragoons across and he has more Dragoons. And what do you do with less Dragoons against more Dragoons? You die. So it looks like, this was like a really weird way to do it, I feel like though. If this was on attack move, he would have crushed everything. If he had made a second DT, it would have been quicker. Uh, but yeah, some cannons are up. Robo, you know, Robo coming up, so he'll be able to get Observer. But now the Dragoons walk in. This should be game. Uh, and that's going to mean that MC is going to move on in first place. Right? Yeah, there's no there's no chance here, right? He's about to get another goon. But yeah, two more goons coming up here. If you come out here to battle, the DT can turn around and kill things. Yeah, this is, this is pretty bad. <laughs> He's going to be able to pick off gates. Uh, more gates are being made. Observatory being made. That's it. GG. MC advances in first place. So, we have MC advancing into uh, first place, you know, going to that round of 16 with some really awesome play. Kind of a weird PvP there. Shaoguga will await the winner of Art User and Bishop. So, once again, my uh, predictions going as poorly as possible. Let's get into this game. Bishop in the top right. Art User in the bottom left. The map is Troy. Wow. Okay, so from our user's point of view, maybe pull first to make sure that, you know, like proxy barracks or something doesn't get him. Like double proxy barracks would be strong here, but probably it's not strong because you should pull first here. Looking at Bishop, I know Bishop very well, uh, or at least his play style very well. I think he's going to go Wraith here. <laughs> he is... He is one of the best Wraith players in the world. Like, he is really, really good against Zerg, and I think it's not a bad build at all in this map. 
Uh, but yeah, Troy is wild. You know, you have these two assimilators. Uh, and yeah, the assimilators like... Oh, Jesus. Wait. This is like a five pool. Okay. Okay. Uh, looks like he might be going for like a wall in here. I'm trying to think what that looks like. If you put a barracks here, does it pop out on the inside? Dude, the... Okay, so I think what we're basically seeing is he's going for a super fast pool. This could kill something like BBS. Uh, there's a possibility that it just runs up and kills the assimilators. This, I believe, is a zergling tight wall where the marines pop out on the inside. Bishop would know, obviously. He'd have this prepared. Uh, I try to avoid playing Troy myself because it's garbage, but we might actually see our user just kill the assimilators. Is he able to do that quickly enough before the Marines stop him? Because if you can keep even one assimilator alive, you're still okay in this matchup. You just can't make tanks in your main. But Marines and SCV still, can still get through. Now, he comes up here. Yeah, he, he hopes that the SCV just keeps traveling to the outside. Doesn't look like that'll be the case. He doesn't want to give away what he's doing. That's why he's not attacking the assimilators. I think optimally for damage output, you would attack assimilators here. Uh, okay, gets the SCV on the outside, so that's kind of nice. Does he start his Marine? He starts the factory super fast. That's a super fast factory. And he sees the Lings coming up. So he has to pull SCVs down for repair. Uh, no, I, I think you just go after assimilators immediately. There's This doesn't make sense. Because this you never break this in a thousand years. Why would you do that? Yeah, I think you just try to kill assimilators. So more Marines will pop out. I think he gets them both. So he's going to turn Bishop into someone playing on an island. Bishop needs to get more SCVs on gas. Okay, he does send them up. That's the important thing here. No, get it. Just go. Just right-click on it. Oh, actually, he's pretty low on three lings. So he sets this up so that you have to come out to stop him. Oh, that's interesting. Droning up at home. Okay, double starport coming. This is wild, guys. All right, the hatchery goes down. Now, here's the thing. You know you're playing Bishop. Okay, brings the SCVs up because he assumes there must be a counterattack. He stops this from dying. This is Bishop advantage. 100%. This is Bishop's advantage. I feel like art user... Maybe he got unlucky. Maybe he made a mistake. Like... I I felt like he, he had enough to kill. Maybe if he had made two more lings, he could have just right-clicked on it and gotten it. Also, he did waste some time attacking this depot and sending those up. But, like, if you close this off, I think the game is maybe even-ish. It just comes down to defending wraiths. But now, looking at this, I don't see any way for our user to win. Like, if he had two bases normally with normal drone counts and, like, Spire tech on the way or even a Hydralis den... Bishop, I would still give him 50% to win with these rates because he's so good with this strategy. But looking at it here, like he has to go Spore, right? Well, he's going to go He's gonna go Hydras. But I don't think Hydras are going to stop what Bishop's doing. Bishop's so good at this. Now, he's made a little Ling prison for the Vulture. He's trying to make it so the Vulture pops here and he just instantly deals damage. You'll see Bishop lift. Perfect lift there. Dude, if this was lower turn rate, he would not be able to do that. <laughs> he probably, I think he would have lost that. If they, let's see, turn rate eight extra high, 100%. Uh, and then it just, it scales, right? Like, you get, it, it lives with one health at turn rate 12. Something like that. Anyways, Wraith's coming down. The Vulture coming down as well. He's making Hydras. This is like 12 drones making two hatch Hydra. Vultures actually do all right against uh, Hydras before any upgrades. Uh, comes in. He's going to target these down super, super fast. Another Hydra pops out. Still more Vultures on the way. I think that's a very good call. All right. Going to go ahead and start killing some drones. He has already supply blocked him. He's going to help to unsupply block him by killing off some drones as well. Control tower is on the way. So Bishop going to go up towards Cloak. Oh, he's killing his own assimilator. That's funny. 
He's saying, you know what? The only thing that could hurt me here maybe is like a Hydra Rush. <laughs> He's making himself an island. Terran players generally don't do this, but he is going for it. Now, four wraiths. You're going to see uh, some very good micro coming up. Bishop, again, so strong at this. There's only 12 drones. The thing is, if you have 12 drones, you can't just make spores. The the five pool just didn't didn't do enough, I think. And since Bishop killed this, maybe it doesn't even matter that he didn't kill this. Yeah, I don't know. It was a big risk from Art User and absolutely did not pay off. Gets another Overlord kill there. Trying to get some more drones. Going to bring him back down to 12. Take some damage on those wraiths. I don't think he mines, though. The mining is so low here. Like... You know, it's one base versus two, but Bishop's mining a lot more. If you look at the actual counts of workers, they're mining the same amount of gas and a lot more minerals are coming in for Bishop. Bishop, like, eventually can just build a command center and float it down. And he has two base and he has mass wraith, right? And I think he'll just continually make these wraiths. You know, it does, it looks right now, range, lots of, lots of, uh, Hydralisks, no layer, so he can't get Overlord speed. Okay, he shuts... What? Why would you kill this? I, I don't know. I think Art User, this game is... Like, I think he went in. I didn't mind it when I saw it, but now that I'm seeing everything play out, I think Art User has entirely the wrong idea of how this game should have been played especially considering Bishop's so good with Wraiths. Maybe you should have opened completely anti-Wraith, like just dude, like hatchery first, heavy drone. You know, obviously that can be risky against the proxy barracks, but, um, you know, it may be hedged for that slightly, but then just try to get into something that can stop the Wraith play. Because I'm looking at this and this is like, look, he's building the command center. He has this island he can float to. He's going to have sick economy. Like, he might just go pure Wraith and then like grab a few science vessels or something like that. And you just look at look at how efficient he's being. Unbelievably one-sided. I think we're just gonna see a GG. And that means that art user is going to be eliminated. GG! Uh yeah. On to the final map. So art user is out. MC is through, and we are going to go ahead and qualify one more player here in this final game. It's either going to be Shao Guga, our Protoss, or Bishop, our Terran. Let's get into it. In the bottom left here of Apocalypse, we have Bishop. In the bottom right, it is Shao Guga. <clears throat> now, Apocalypse being a three-player map, uh, you know, there's, it, it, it is pretty interesting for TVP, I think. Uh, generally, it is considered a bit Protoss favored, uh, but I think it's really playable, like in my opinion. It, it, like there's, as long as you open well against Protoss, it feels like you can get your three base relatively easily. And then, uh, you know, you can kind of try to hit a timing push as Protoss takes the map. I feel like a lot of games end up like that if you open well. Uh, that's the thing. There's a lot of pressure that can happen. It's a very flat map. Like, it does have three raised areas, uh, you know, in front of the three bases on each side. But because it's so flat, a lot of times Protoss put extra pressure on. Also, uh, there's raised, uh, some raised terrain around the main. You can see the edges of it here, which makes things like Reaver play and Arbiter play very, very strong. So we'll see what Shao Gago wants to do. I think that's the main thing I'm looking towards. I feel like for Bishop, it's, I feel like every time here you're going factory expand. Against Shao Gaga, this situation, it's like you just, you have to do something very stable, right? Three Marines and Vulture. And, uh, you know, obviously just to scout to, to figure out what your opponent's up to. Uh, but yeah, just block the early stuff, expand, get your defenses up, and then play a solid macro game. I think that that's a great way for Bishop to approach this, but we'll see what he wants to do. So going for the barracks, is he going to make that gas? Oh, he's going gasless expand. Okay, okay. And the way he's doing this, it'll probably be two depots, my guess. Hmm. I guess uh, part of that matters on when he scouts him. So is he going to go north or is he going to go east? He's going east, it looks like. Okay, so this actually, he could go for a one depot gasless expand. 
that is the greediest best build uh, if you can pull it off. And we can see no Zealot on the way. And he's going to see that as well because he's scouting him first. Now, if you don't scout your opponent first, you kind like, and they make a Zealot, you can die. So he starts the Marine. Then he'll come down. You'll see there's the gateway. Okay, you can cancel the Marine, I think. Is he going to cancel the Marine? No, he's just going to let it. It's fine. Uh, you know, there might be a probe out too, and then you'd want the Marine to push the probe back. Uh, but he will be supply capped a little bit longer. You notice he's skipping an SCV there, puts down the depot, needs to put down the gas. Uh, and of course, now he sees that there is not, in fact, uh, any Zealot coming out. Because as the core finishes, like that's the last moment you'll see a Zealot pop. So great scouting here. Really strong opening from Bishop. Really strong opening. Shugaga starts his range. He has no idea what Bishop's doing, by the way. Starts a depot just to block that Nexus for a moment. But of course, you know, this is only going to block it for a little bit because the Dragoon will pop out and you'll have to cancel it immediately. So that gas finishing up. And yeah, he's going to he's gonna get that mining ASAP. Wants to get his bunker ready as well. See, as soon as that comes up. Oh, wow. If he had actually taken another shot, he might have gotten the kill <laughs> instead of the cancel. He actually slowed that quite a bit. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Bunker is started. The Dragoon is the first unit to scout for Shaogaga. He's actually getting pretty far behind here. Like this is, this is, uh, there's a lot of reactions that you can do if you find your opponent doing this. Like for instance, you can just like rally goons out and put pressure on the bunker and force siege mode. Uh, obviously right now there's some other builds where you proxy like a robo in a gateway. That's very aggressive for busting. Uh, you can play greedy and just try to go into like three Nexus very quickly. Right, there's a lot of counterplay, but he just hasn't scouted. And sometimes, you know, it's good to mix things like this in. This particular time, it's not working out well for Shaogaga. He's trying to optimize his economy, but he got slowed down. And it's basically the most optimized economy you'll ever see for Terran in this matchup. So really, really well done. Bishop will end up throwing down his second factory. Little bit late. Has over 200 gas when he throws that one down. But it's not, it's not like the end of the world or anything. Uh, if you're trying to do a very quick timing push, it does make it a little bit weaker, but that's fine. Comes in, does see the robo. So that's big. That's big. That means he doesn't need to get a turret right away. He can actually put on a pretty high pressure build here. Like, uh, notice he is getting a second gas. He's, yeah, this looks to me, he might four fact here. This looks like a four fact for me. Okay. Uh, right now, Shaogaga is pressuring the bunker. More Marines will be made. He needs to fill this up completely with Marines. Let's see if he gets Siege mode. You're going to get Siege? The thing is, if you bring more than three Dragoons and they don't get Siege, this can become dangerous. This can become quite dangerous. And uh, yeah, he's not mining fully on gas and nor should he. Notice how he takes the SCVs off gas. Really important because you're spending so much on repairing. You don't want to start banking gas here. You don't have the minerals to match it. Uh, but yeah, throws down another factory. So this, because he has to repair so much, maybe this will turn into like a three factory push. You know, I know I said four fact, but like you're losing a lot here and he's trying to skip siege mode. It's a little bit greedy. Gonna come up here. It's only three Marines there. He's gonna get that fourth in there pretty quickly. That's important. That's like a, to help punish if the goons try to jump on the tank. Notice this micro, this is really important. See, he steps forward, he gets one volley. It only takes four goons two volleys to kill the siege tank. So that's why it's really dangerous. Notice how he has to repair. Still keeping damage on. This is why you generally get siege mode against this. Really, really greedy stuff, man. <laughs> Bishop is trying to optimize his build almost too much. If you look at the amount of money he's losing through the repair and the lost mining time, it's more than siege mode at this point. So definitely this this feels like Shaogaga is catching up a little bit, <laughs> right? Still good for Bishop. Like, don't don't get me wrong. He's fine. Looking back at the base, there is a Reaver about to pop. Still no Siege Mode. Still hasn't started Siege Mode. Vulture Speed on the way. Bishop wants to attack so badly. So bad. Dude, this is crazy what I'm seeing here. He's like trying to micro. How far out are you going to go? He's trying to bait him. Chao Guga is trying to bait Bishop into moving further to try to pick off this goon. Now he has a Reaver. Dude, let's see if he gets a good Reaver shot. Oh my god, the Zealot pops out. Okay, the Reaver shot. The first one's not good. Only gets a single Marine. Targeting down the goons. That's that's pretty good from Bishop. But look, he loses two tanks. 
Trying to go after another one. A little bit too far there from Shalgaga. Still no siege mode. Armory on the way. Academy on the way. Getting mines. Ooh, let's see. Can he get a good one? Ah, he loses the Reaver. Okay, that was a good snipe. But now Bishop has lost like a Vulture, a Marine, three of his five siege tanks. He's on three factory. I tell you, Shaoguga, he's like, he's put on some good pressure. Look at this. He's up nine workers. Wow. Wow. Feels like Bishop's build has fallen apart a little bit. He had such a nice advantage and just try to be a bit too greedy. Really, like situations like this, it's kind of a long travel distance on this map to get to the natural. But if he had gotten siege, I feel like he would be in such a solid position right now. You know, he'd have like six tanks. He'd have a ton of vultures. It would be a slower push, sure. But it would feel better for him, I think. Now, that's not to say he's not still going to win, right? This push is coming out. It still looks really strong. He's got a lot of vultures. He's got SCVs in here. A few Marines left over. Those will be good at tanking, maybe pushing the shuttle away if it tries to fly over the tanks. In fact, he even made another Marine there, so that's kind of cool to see. Laying a lot of mines here. Shaoguga trying to escape the mines. Trying to keep his Dragoons alive. Brings up this Reaver. Can he get a good Reaver shot? Oh, God. This is great play. Great micro here uh, from Bishop. He is doing so well. Picks up a goon. Dude, he just lost his whole army to this. So this was great trapping. If Shaoguga had gotten his units down in a more defensive position, maybe he could have set something up. But right now, looking at this, it's getting tough. He just doesn't have a lot of beef here to stop this. Now the Vultures have the option to run in, start laying mines and things like that. Now the Reaver may be able to clean up the rest of these siege tanks. Okay, gets a big scarab off there. Gets another one. He saw it. No, he doesn't have a goon in there actually. Uh, no Vultures running in or anything yet. Most of the Vultures came over to help out this siege tank. We actually have a pretty big supply advantage right now for our Chinese bro. Like he's got, he's got way more workers at the moment. Things are sloppy, damage is occurring, but the game is not over. There, I feel like there's still a little, there is a chance here, right? He's starting to lose the Nexus. Things, it does feel like things are getting slightly out of control. Couple more facts, very good follow up there for Bishop. Really, again, if he had pulled these goons down, the goons got trapped. You can see where he was like laying mines to kind of trap them, blocking with vultures, did a great job eliminating those. If those goons had been able to get down, this Nexus, I don't think, falls at all. I think he he pretty easily holds it. So now it's two base versus two base. Bishop running up forward once again, drops this Reaver out. Can he hold on? Bishop retreating. Mostly a Vulture-based army, so it kind of makes sense, right? Goon, Goon Reaver will be able to destroy that. Chaoguga producing consistently here off of his five gates. Robo still making some Reavers. His probe count is still very good. 59 probes. I think here you just make a nexus and, and try to break up in this area, right? Like take control of your side of the map, macro heavily, and then try to take map control overall, which he should be able to do. But this is good positioning from Bishop. Look at this. He's trying to block the nexus. Oh my God. <laughs> Bishop with all the offensive buildings. Sets up a siege tank, continues to push forward here. He has one Goliath to uh, dissuade the shuttle from coming over. But the shuttle is actually over here with the speed upgrade going for some counterplay. There is a missile turret, but look at this. Getting the vultures in. Uh-oh. Not looking too good here. Maybe this drop can do something as it flies over the turrets, but we see probes starting to die. The siege tank push looking really scary. We have a dr group, group of dragoons there, but this is looking bad. Okay, let's see what he gets done. He, there's a lot more probes than there are uh, SCVs, but he loses that shuttle. If he loses the Nexus, the game is basically done. Multiple observers over here. I feel like they should be kind of seeing everything. Yeah, and that's going to be it. GG. Shaoguga going to be eliminated, and we're going to have Bishop end up moving on. This is your final results for Group B. We have MC in first place with a round of 16. Bishop in second place. I am happy to see Bishop go through. Do love him as a player. I have to say, I think Art User underperformed here today. Shaoguga, I think he performed very, very well. And really, like he kind of caught up against Bishop and then Bishop kind of out-microed him, out-maneuvered him, 
reduced the goon count and made it so that the reaver wasn't as effective and was able to push into a victory so shaguga i think he was actually very close to advancing uh but unable to do it this time our second chinese pro falling uh so yeah that does it for group b guys i really hope that you have enjoyed this cnsl match thank you very much for watching and uh let me know in the comments if you made it all the way to the end appreciate it